Hey, you in George? Hey, Jose. Hey, George. What's up, Jeff? Not much. Everybody is quiet. I know. We got to come in. We got to start talking. <laughs> be, it's being recorded now, so I guess we should be quiet now. Yes, I think it is a perfect time to get started. So thank you all so much for joining us today for this information session about MCLA, BCC, and General Dynamics internships opportunities. So I'm going to turn it over to Stephen and Mike from General Dynamics to kick us off with an overview of what General Dynamics can offer. Hi, everyone. It appears the screen share um, has been disabled. I'm not sure. Why don't you give that a try now? I'm interested right. to how Mike, you ended up with my name as your Zoom name. <laughs> Not quite sure how that happened. No idea. Maybe I joined wrong. I think it's probably because I forwarded you the join link and it was specific to me, but there you go. I'll, I'll introduce myself quickly. My name is Steven Story. I'm, I'm the Pitchfield Site Manager for Engineering Leadership Development here at General Dynamics. I've been working at GD for about six and a half years. Um, primarily, my role is to work with people in the Engineering Leadership Program, which is a three-year rotational program for entry career level, but I also help to coordinate some of our internship program and some of our STEM outreach here in the Berkshires. And I'm Mike Fraferro. I'm the senior manager for Pittsfield Manufacturing. I've been with the company for uh, going on 12 years, um, graduate of our manufacturing leadership program, and also help to coordinate that for uh, mission systems and here in Pittsfield. So we wanted to kind of give you a good overview of, of the company before we get started with some of the question and answer period. But um, so General Dynamics as a, as a large corporation has over 100,000 employees. We've, we're divided into many different smaller, more independent companies. We happen to be representing General Dynamics Mission Systems, which is over on the right of this chart in the technology field. Um, some of the other companies that you, you may recognize some other ones like Gulfstream, which is a commercial um, airline company. Um, Electric Boat is probably the most popular one that most people know. They, they build submarines over in Groton, Connecticut. Um, there's also Ordnance and Tactical Systems has a location up in Southern Vermont. So it's often familiar to people with that from this area. But we're over here in the technology side of things, Mission Systems being primarily mostly a systems integration company working to take large complex systems and, and integrate them for our customers. <clears throat> so this is kind of our, our mission statement where we're trying to provide smarter mission critical systems and products to defense civil governments, intelligent and cybersecurity customers. I, I, I kind of like to always summarize past this to, you know, we're, we're really working to make these complex systems and, and really try to keep the warfighter in mind at all times. It's, it's something that we always try to hammer into new employees and interns is like, remember that the products that we're going, that we're working on go to some sailor or some army person in the field and they use them every day to keep themselves safe. And so we're, we're trying to make that safer world through smarter platforms and missions and, and really trying to help them succeed throughout their time, wherever they happen to be deployed. And so with that, um, whether it was the previous slide or this slide and, and upcoming slides, I, I encourage you to truly look at the pictures that we're showing. Um, everything that we have on these slides um, is is where our hardware, um, the systems we provide, the technology that we provide to our customers, as Stephen said, the warfighter, um, the pictures actually represent the, the product and technology that we deliver. So everything you see here um, ties back to General Dynamics mission systems. And so, you know, as you can see from the pictures, um, and as Stephen has already mentioned, uh, our, our solutions are mission critical. Our, our products end up in, uh, at the end of the day, end up in the warfighters' hands, um, who are, you know, their mission is to serve and protect uh, the world that we live in. Um, you can see that from the pictures as well, uh, that we do uh, cross, whether it be land, sea, air, space, uh, as well as technology, um, cyber. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that we, we also like to say is uh, technically we're everywhere because the, the programs that we support, the technologies, uh, the hardware that we uh, provide to our customers uh, truly is kind of uh, everywhere um, 
So, you know, with that, you know, really what we do is we're um, system integrators, whether that be hardware um, that we integrate, uh, we, we buy a lot of kind of commercial off the shelf equipment. Uh, we integrate that into kind of a, a, a platform that we then deliver um, and or we take um, systems and we integrate those systems um, with hardware and we provide those to our customers as well. So really, you know, we, we are a platform and system integrator um, for our customers. A lot of what we do is cutting edge. Uh, I don't think we're gonna touch on it here, but uh, the Pittsfield site formerly was, was known as General Dynamics Advanced Information Systems. And that name, you know, truly is, um, when we look at the technologies that we provide to our customers, you know, it, it really is leading edge um, type of technology uh, to put our warfighters um, in, in with their best foot forward. Uh, and then again, we, we have been uh, supporting uh, the, the Department of Defense for over 60 years of, of proven, proven performance. So I did touch on the, you know, technically we're everywhere in, in this chart here, uh, just kind of quickly depicts uh, at, at the mission systems level, not just Pittsfield, uh, but at the mission systems level, the, the platforms that we support. And so you can see land, uh, space, and sea make up the majority of the programs um, or te technologies that we offer. Um, and again, you know, take a look at those pictures uh, because we have equipment um, on everything that you, you see. Looking um, at, at mission systems as a whole, uh, and, and these numbers might be slightly out of date because they do change so rapidly. Uh, but you can see we're, we're roughly 13,000 employees. Uh, we are an uh, international company. Um, of those 13,000, roughly 10%, um, again, the, the numbers change um, pretty quickly, but roughly 1,500 employees are located here in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Our headquarters is in Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, being close to Washington, D.C. is important for our headquarters. Um, as I go across the top and, and kind of touch on some of these, um, you know, because of the type of company we are, uh, you can see 75% are degreed, um, college degree um, employees. Uh, a lot of, of that are technical engineering degrees. Roughly 50% have a engineering or technical degree. Um, so you can see that number 6,000 employees there. Um, again, roughly 10%, uh, give or, or excuse me, roughly 20% um, are international. Um, so again, uh, you know, 2,000 employees are, are um, international employees. Um, we have over 75 locations um, throughout the world, um, and and again, it's it's a um, a lot of we have some larger sites um, such as Pittsfield, and then we have some smaller sites that maybe you know 10, 15, 20 people, um, but uh, we, we are uh, in a lot of places uh, around uh, the United States. So the Pittsfield location specifically supports the maritime and strategic systems line of business of, of general dynamics mission systems. So the majority of the work that, that we're doing is falling into kind of the different things that you see on this slide. Um, in Pittsfield, really, it's, it's the first three, some of the submarine and tactical weapon control systems working on the fast attack submarines and the control systems to launch the Tomahawks there. Um, our, our probably second largest program that we have in Pittsfield is the surface systems that we work on. So littoral class submarine or, or the littoral combat ship, sorry, um, which is a surface vessel that we work on that's designed to kind of go in the shallow waters and help support defending the coastlines is, is one of our biggest programs. We've been the systems integrator for a long time on that one and, and have been really working to develop really cool, unique systems. And then probably our longest standing program and, and biggest one in Pittsfield. So the work that we're doing on the strategic weapon launch program, um, we've been doing that for 50 years and, and we hope and plan to be doing that all the way through at least 2084 now and work really closely with our customers to work on the Ohio class and Columbia class submarines to, to be the systems integrator on, on those systems. So really cool and exciting work we're doing in Pittsfield. We also help, um, we, we have a little bit of support of the airborne stuff that is primarily in Bloomington, Minnesota or um, some of our Virginia offices. And then we also have some work that we're working on on some of the underwater vehicles that primarily is done out of the Quincy, Massachusetts office. Um, and then just kind of a little bit more of 
an overview of the actual buildings and spaces that we have here. You know, we're, we're through three different lease buildings from the government and one that we lease from another company, but, you know, four different locations here in Pittsfield, there's, you know, close to a million square feet of capacity. Like Mike said, 1500 employees, about a thousand of them are engineering. Um, on the right, you can see the breakdown. We have kind of across all different domains of systems, electrical hardware, software, and, and then a lot of support and, and other engineering services and cyber type functions that we have here in Pittsfield. So really a broad, broad horizons for any kind of engineering. And then also a lot of other disciplines in terms of support. We have a whole HR group, we have a finance group, we have program performance, we have facilities, IT, and, and all those kind of support functions that are obviously very important to helping everyone accomplish the mission. So lots of stuff that goes on in Pittsfield and oh, manufacturing, I probably shouldn't. Thank uh, you. Manufacturing or Michael, Michael be sad. <laughs> and I think my manufacturing is close to three, 400 people that we have in Pittsfield too which is obviously a very important part that we're doing to, to actually build the hardware that's getting sent to these platforms. So I think that brings us to the end of the company overview. Um, I believe there's a question to answer at the end of this session. So if you have questions about the company, you can, you can bring them up towards the end and we'll move on to the next part. Excellent. <clears throat> Jackie, Mike, Stephen, thank you very much for the overview. And thank you very much, Jackie, for your planning and programming and organization today. Um, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Joshua Mendel. I'm a Director of Strategic and Corporate Relations for MCLA. And I'm uh, very happy to be here with you all today. And thank you all for your participation and wanting to learn more about opportunities for Berkshire Community College and MCLA students for internships with General Dynamics. Both institutions are very proud of our partnerships with General Dynamics and are very thankful for the learning opportunities for our students. Two former students, now General Dynamics professionals, which we also are extremely proud of, are with us today to briefly share their experiences with the internships and also their transition from going from the internship to being hired as full-time employees at General Dynamics. Mary Barrio is a Berkshire Community College alum and Brian Adult from MCLA are joining us today. Mary and Brian, welcome to today's program and thank you for your willingness to share with us your experiences. Thank you. So we have, we have about um, 10 minutes to just kind of learn a little bit more about your stories, your experiences and your opportunities that your college um, education has provided you at General Dynamics. Mary, we're gonna start the first question with you if that's okay. And would you mind just identifying for us why you chose to do an internship specifically with General Dynamics and what were some of the factors that led you to apply and were successful to obtain that internship? Yeah, sure. Um, hello, my name is Mary and uh, good afternoon. So uh, one of the reasons why I choose General Dynamics is because um, this is one of the largest um, industries in our country to um, hire engineers. Um, I met many people that they were working for GD for a really long time and they always look very um, excited about the work, happy about, about um, their about the environment where they work in, and um, and then as a as I was developing my skills as an engineer, I started looking more into the company and actually looking um, that there is a reason, uh, an objective behind the work that GD does. You know, like so, uh, it supports our troops, soldiers. And at the end, we're just working towards our community and, uh, and the safety of our country. So that's my biggest motivation, pretty much of why do I wanna work there and that I'm making a difference. So thank you very much, Mary. And Brian, would you mind sharing um, why you chose to do an internship with General Dynamics and what were some of those pieces that led you to, um, to this process? Sure. Uh, so I'm Ryan. Uh, um, a applying to General Dynamics for a, an internship, it really started out uh, 
with with the location being in Pittsfield. It was so close to home where I could uh, one save money by by living at home and commuting to the workplace. That was summer of 2019 at this point. So I had both the experience in the office and working from home. Um, but one of the main factors was supporting supporting the, the mission for the, the armed forces. Being that my grandfather was a Navy man, I, I figured that would be my way to contribute to the, the mission and in honor of him to continue uh, putting work in towards customers like the Navy. Great, thank you, Brian. Um, Brian, I'm gonna go back to you on this next question. What was the process like to obtain the internship? Sure, it was a um, very, I wouldn't say, I would say straightforward process. Um, being at MCLA, there were the resources there, um, especially the time when I applied, there was a, I wanna say a hiring event that, that went on, that was put on where some different uh, managers from different departments at General Dynamics came to MCLA and there was um, an interview process. They looked over the resume, did the, the standard interview questions, ran down the list of my skills and work history, and they took my resume and, and eventually gave me a, a call back and asked me when I could start my internship. So it was a very straightforward, easy process. And we'll learn from Mike and Steve in our next piece of the program, um, how those steps take place for our current students. Um, Mary, would you mind distinguishing for us what were some of the critical um, work qualities that allowed you to have a successful internship with General Dynamics? Yes, so um, critical work qualities. I, being a player was very, very important um, because you don't build a ship by your own. <laughs> you work with multiple people across multiple teams and um, it was very, very important to develop those skills. Um, so that, that, that would be the main, the main one. Um, another one is uh, to, I think I was asking so many questions all the time. Um, I didn't a, a a answer for granted. I was asking like, why do you do certain stuff this way? Why not do it the other way? And um, believe it or not, like there's people there that you that just been doing the same process for a long time, you know. And um, and I was just bringing some questions. I were I was questioning what they were doing, and um, and we were finding. That uh, we could, we were doing something. We could have done it better, and our process um, are now being improved by just asking simple questions. So, thank you very much, Mary. Brian, what were some of the key attributes that you gained from your internship experience that you feel has allowed you to be a very successful professional with General Dynamics now? I would say that some key attributes that I learned from my internship experience was um, being persistent and patient with the work um, that I was doing, which allowed me to not only teach myself more about the way I was doing the work. Um, patience is sometimes it can be frustrating when things aren't going as planned. Um, so you have to learn to work through that and that applied to both um, my academic experience and now my professional experience. So thank you, Brian. And Mary, the, the same question to you. What were some of those key features or attributes that you gained from your internship experience that has allowed you to be very successful at General Dynamics as a professional now? Um, so time, <laughs> um, the way that we work General Dynamics is very is time track, so every minute counts. And um, what I learned from there is just like we gotta take advantage of every minute in our lives. And and if you're studying or doing any 
in at work or with your family, just make sure you um, make sure you, you make that time worth. And um, I always was like super motivated, um, always willing to um, work. You know, if we have to work over the weekends, over time, I was just like fun because I wanted to make sure that I was part of the of the team. I was part of the project, and I was gonna be there for my team, uh, work with them until we get it done. Awesome. Thank you, Mary. And the final question for both Brian and Mary, Brian, we'll start with you. Would you mind sharing with the audience tips or suggestions you may have as, as our audience members are considering applying for an internship with General Dynamics? Sure, so the tip that I would give is to make your resume stand out. Um, stand out using, using terms that General Dynamics Mission Systems uses on their on their website. So take any of those keywords and fit them into your resume as best as you can and build those those professional skills now. So that way you can have them um, during the interview process and resume building with General Dynamics. Thank you, Brian. And Mary, what are some suggestions that you would share with our audience? Um, I would say look for a mentor. Um, a mentor in school or a professional mentor or a um, mentor for life. They're all good to have someone to guide you through the process. Um, be a leader. Uh, I think it's very important for GED to, uh, for you to be a leader. We are always looking for leaders in our company. Um, so that's very important. And um, never stop learning. Even when you graduated, you're working, uh, keep yourself motivated to uh, learn new technology, new programs, new, new um, languages, or to just develop new skills because that's what was gonna make you outstand from the others. Great, thank you. Mary, what was the internship that you had and what position do you now have as a professional with General Dynamics? Um, I worked, uh, my internship was with the LCS infrastructure hardware team. Um, I worked for the, I'm still working for the surface, surface ship system team. And um, I, I was doing, um, I did, uh, I research and performed trace, trace studies for uh, replace obsolete equipment for the ship. Um, we support manufacturing uh, with red line engineering drawings. Um, and we worked in many, many peer reviews. Um, and peer reviews are, we evaluate others, others peers work and other peers work we evaluate our, our project. Um, this way we're ensuring that um, we are, we are developing a good product. And um, yeah, and right now um, I'm a project lead engineer. Um, I work for the systems team and um, I love it. Uh, I've, been, I've been working for the software team, for the network team, um, and I'm just keep going. <laughs> Great, thank you, Mary. And Brian, what was your position as an intern in your new position now? Sure, so my position as an intern was software engineer, which I currently still am under the same department of the of, of guidance. Um, in the beginning, I was doing more of an internal, internal project um, to benefit workflow on the team. And currently my project is uh, supporting supporting some of the customer contracts that uh, General Dynamics has and um, as a software engineer, so. Excellent. Thank you, Mary and Brian, for sharing your experiences. And we certainly wish you all the great success with your new careers and opportunities with General Dynamics. We're very proud that you're representatives of both our institutions. Steve and Michael, I'll turn the session back to you to discuss types of internships in the application process. 
All right, thank you. Um, I I want to start by apologizing. I did not get um, this next presentation uh, public released in time. Uh, I'll, I'll still try to get that done so we can share it after the fact. Um, but I, I just want to kind of walk through quickly some of our, I'll say, intern statistics just to, to share with you. Um, so as we look at last year, uh, uh, meaning the summer of uh, 2020, um, as you can imagine, a pretty unique year from a um, internship standpoint, um, but we did still support um, up to 55 interns um, here in Pittsfield. Um, I think in years past, it's been a little bit more, um, but I, I don't believe that COVID truly had an impact on our ability to support internships. Um, it may have just changed how those interns um, may have stepped foot in the door uh, on day one to pick up a laptop, and that might have been the last uh, time they were in the in the facility. Uh, most of their work, unless they happen to be, I'll say, in manufacturing and or supporting uh, one of our labs, uh, their their internships were uh, fully remote, as uh, is the majority of our workforce today. Uh, just to, I'll say, touch base on that. So we showed some numbers. Uh, Pittsfield is around 1,500 employees. Uh, and I'm sure Brenda has a, a more accurate number, but I, I'll say roughly um, 1,000 or 1,100 of those um, are work from home. Um, so you can you can see that the majority of our workforce is is work from home. Um, so getting into some of the internship statistics, as we look at the last year, um, like I said, we had roughly 55 uh, interns. The majority of them were kind of uh, from uh, Massachusetts. Uh, as we look at kind of the colleges that they uh, came from, uh, you can imagine being uh, a highly technical uh, company. We do have a lot of folks from the RPIs, uh, the RITs, Rochester Institute of Technology, um, but we did rough 5% uh, of our interns did come from MCLA last year. Um, while some of the bigger, uh, like an RPI made up, made 20% of the population. So, you know, MCLA wasn't too far behind um, if you, if you really look at um, the overall picture. Uh, from, you know, their backgrounds, um, the degrees that they were supporting, uh, the majority, 45% were mechanical engineers, but we did have people from business administration, psychology, um, finance and accounting, um, mathematics and statistics, um, computer science, economics, um, computer software, um, as well as some other um, engineering disciplines, but again, a, a wide variety of, of degrees that uh, we did bring in for internships. As we look at, you know, where in, in their um, four-year um, kind of roadmap are they, uh, the majority of our interns uh, were rising seniors. Uh, that is where we tend to focus, but at the same time, there's value uh, with General Dynamics bringing in uh, some underclassmen as well, those rising juniors and, and on the rare occasion, the rising sophomores as well. Uh, we get value out of bringing interns in, um, you know, as their uh, rising sophomore and then ideally keeping them over, you know, three summers or in addition to that, maybe three winter breaks. And so, you know, not only are they getting the benefit of a three year kind of internship, um, but we're also continuing to grow and develop that intern and, and hopefully um, but when all said and done, they, they continue to uh, stay with us um, in Pittsfield. Uh, so as, as we look at the numbers, um, we had 21 new interns while we had returning uh, 34 interns. So again, you can see that um, uh, some of those rising juniors, it wasn't their first time. Uh, 34 of them were re returned um, or returning interns for us. Um, the different uh, departments that they supported, we had 5% in finance, 2% in IT, 62% um, uh, were in our systems engineering. Um, again, you, that is a, a major um, department or, or function in uh, Pittsfield that, uh, that we do support. Uh, but again, we do support, as, as Stephen mentioned, um, whether it be manufacturing, HR, IT, um, business, uh, we do support other interns in other areas of our, um, of our uh, business here in Pittsfield. We do have a, a pretty 
uh, because we do this every year, we do have a pretty good process in place. Um, we have a dedicated team that really um, supports the interns as they come on board. So at the company level, right, we have HR involved, um, but specifically at Pittsfield, we kind of have an executive sponsor who really helps to drive uh, the program, uh, the internship program experience um, over the summer. And then there's a lot of supporting uh, cast as well uh, that help to coordinate different events, uh, different lunch and learns, um, get togethers um, the best we can. Um, again, understanding that last year was a pretty unique twist um, compared to previous uh, years for the internship program. Uh, so not only do we have specific uh, members of our team that are kind of just dedicated to supporting the overall um, program success, intern program success, but then you also have your managers, uh, the senior managers. Uh, we, we assign mentors and we also assign buddies. Um, and so the, the purpose behind buddies and mentors is really to help you as you transition, I'll say from the, we'll say classroom to the, the real world work environment. Um, and or, you know, just getting um, yourself familiar with uh, Pittsfield and uh, as Stephen pointed out, the four different buildings that we have, uh, you may have to bounce back and forth um, in years past and, and hopefully again in the future uh, between those four buildings. And so understanding just, just that piece alone uh, takes some time. So, you know, this summer will most likely be impacted again by COVID. Um, it, it's too early to tell, but um, from a planning perspective, we are planning that these internships will be um, fully remote, uh, unless again, you're supporting manufacturing or, or specific uh, uh, internships that require you to be on site. Uh, but with that being said, you know, these, these, this program has the backing of our executive leadership team um, because of the pipeline of candidates that we're able to bring in, um, such as Mary and Brian, um, through these internship programs, and then continue to um, bring them on as full-time employees. Um, you know, so again, the expectation would be that interns would would come on site, you know, get some of their webcams, headsets, computers, and then that may be the last time that they see the um, see the building until uh, they have to hand some of that stuff back in. As we look at, you know, how we how we um, try to shape the program, it's really around we want to grow the candidates, we want the candidates to network, and then we want them to collaborate. And so, really, by growing, right, we're giving them challenging work, um, we're giving them kind of real time feedback as they're progressing um, from a network standpoint, whether it's networking with other in, uh, interns, so you know their peers, uh, networking with um, people who have kind of been in their shoes, uh, but also Again, our executive leadership team, we, we um, put on different events where the interns have the opportunity to network with our um, executive leadership team and, and their managers and senior managers. Um, let, me, let me just jump over and share this screen here. Oh, I think the host disabled the uh, sharing again. Sorry, it's not gone for you. <laughs> Steven, do you want to talk to, to this slide? Yeah, so we tried to put together a timeline of, of kind of where we usually see, oh, I just see the typo right there on the first one, um, where, where we typically try to hire our interns. So typically in November, December is when we start to see a lot of the internships getting posted. Um, I think this year we, I know we have at least 12 that we're bringing in brand new and we're still trying to hire a couple more. Um, February and March is, is where we go to a lot of career fairs um, throughout all of the Northeast to continue to um, connect with candidates and, and kind of get a lot more resumes and a lot of people applying. Um, most of, a lot of interviews will happen in, in the kind of that March and April timeframe with trying to get people back answers very quickly after their interview and then our internship program officially starts in the end of May or the very beginning of June. And then we try to get everyone through for about 12 weeks towards the middle of August before people return back to school. Um, so we, we have hired a lot of the interns for, for this summer, but there are still that we're a couple more that we are looking for. So I, I'll direct you kind of to that website down at the bottom, which talks about, brings you to a Pittsfield specific page, talks a little bit more about the work that we do and all the things that we have. And then from there you can, go on and, and search for the different opportunities. Um, I, I will say, I know there's, I think two things posted right now, but sometimes stuff does change and we will continue to post. So 
if you're looking for something this summer, keep an eye out. Um, but if you're looking for something in the future summer, it's like November, December is definitely the start when you want to start looking and, and keep checking back every couple weeks. And just right, Stephen, we, we um, those fall career fairs as well. When we go there, um, while yes, we're looking for full time um, employees, we also are there collecting resumes for interns as well. So if you know, um, strongly encourage you, uh, as Stephen pointed out, the spring career fair is coming up. Um, but also, if you're not looking for one this summer, um, but maybe next year, you know, those fall career fairs as well, strongly encourage you to attend and um, submit your resumes through that through that process as well. And so to answer the last question in the chat, um, we due to the nature of the work that we do, um, everyone does have to be a full U.S. citizen. Um, unfortunately, we can't have permanent residents working at our Pittsfield facility, and that's kind of just due to the government contracting that we do. So that's the, the first step towards eligibility for security clearance. A lot of our interns will actually be submitted, and we'll try to get them a security clearance during their intern ships so it's we do typically want those people that would be eligible for for all those reasons um i think that's all we have for slides and we can go ahead and start answering and see there's one question in the chat another question in the chat right now mike did you have anything else before we go to questions and answers let me just see if I had anything else in that slide deck I wanted to share. No, uh, nothing else. Do you have, I see you raising your hand, Jose. Yeah, a couple of students have asked me. So you right now you have um, two internships posted for the Pittsfield side. I believe one is in software and the other one is IT. If a student who, let's say, wants to major in mechanical and there's no opportunity for them right now, there's no specific, uh, should they just submit their resume in the general submit your resume um, link on the website or how do they go about that? Maybe there would be something for them in the future. Yeah, that's definitely a, a good first step is to submit your resume through that, just the general submit your resume that goes to a representative from each department on our kind of weekly engineering resource board. But then I also encourage people to continue to check back. Um, the best way to get seen is to apply to something directly once it gets posted. So like for someone in mechanical, it's definitely worth keeping an eye out. And, and sometimes some of our needs do change as we get closer to the summer and we may add another position there. Um, and then obviously looking out again in the, the winter when we get started with posting. Um, to answer Amber's question, I think Brenda started it, but yeah, I mean, we, we do have a technical writing department that does a lot of the fleet documentation and kind of the user procedures and, and maintenance operations for the fleet. Um, I think they have hired interns in the past. I'm not sure if they have anything lined up for this year, but it's definitely something that we often try to make the connections with and, and hire locally if we can for those groups. because I think they're, they're really good groups and do a lot of support for the fleet. On average, how many MCLA students that apply for internships get that internship? I don't know if I have any of the statistics there, Mike. I don't know if you have anything either. No, we might be able to reach out to Lauren to see, you know, if we can get those statistics, but I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I know we definitely do like trying to hire from the local pools and, and people who have been to the local area. I, we we like having people who have seen the area and, and know what Pittsfield and the Berkshires have to offer because they typically are happy here and will stay here for a long time. So often people from BCC and MCLA get, get a second look just because of the fact that you've been in the Berkshires and, and have chosen to like it here already. How many internship applications do we usually get? <sighs> I think it certainly depends on the position. Um, you know, I, I think we, we hire on average, I think close to 50 internships. And I think sometimes we can have close to um, 20 to 50 resumes on each of those. Um, now, 
sometimes we'll have one software position posted and we'll hire five software interns. So maybe from those 50 software in resumes, we'll get five out of. So it, it's, it's a little hard to answer, but you know, there's definitely a lot of people applying from a lot of different schools that we go to throughout the career fair seasons. Steven, I was just, um, I would like to add um, about applying for, for an internship to GD. Um, I got my, my interview uh, in, a, in, that was in, um, in a different state. I went to a national conference and uh, that was Kansas City to be uh, um, specific. Um, and just having, uh, just becoming, being an alumni from, from BCC, um, it was just kind of like, oh, um, like I was local, I was from, um, from the area, from Massachusetts area. And one of the TMs was actually from Pittsfield. So definitely was very important and very, uh, like that helped me a lot to like get connected with, uh, with the manager. So I do see that Ryan has his hand raised. Ryan, would you like to ask your question next? Yeah, I'm sorry. I just posted it actually in the in the chat as well. Um, no, because I just I followed the link from earlier, and I've actually been to this site a few times uh, looking for internships. But currently, when I go there and I do the the search, it's not posting. It's zero results for internships within 50 miles of Mass or uh, Pittsfield. So I don't know if, if I'm doing something wrong or, or why there's no internships being listed um, at the moment. Is, are, are they all filled, filled up? Is, is that possibly why? I'll have to look, because I thought I looked this morning and we still had a couple up there. Um, it, the site can be a little funny with how you do keyword searches. I usually almost don't put any keywords in, just scroll through the list to see what I can find. Gotcha. Um, so if you just search for just just to Pittsfield, sometimes it shows up. You now I got stuff up. popping up doing yeah. that. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, that's better. <laughs> okay, in, intern seems to be a better word to search for than internship. Okay, that that's probably it as well. I, our All site's right. a little funny with with how to find things, but sure, sure. Okay, no, I appreciate that. I'm seeing some things now. I was like, nothing was popping up. I'm like, hang on, what am I doing wrong here? <laughs> Great, that's awesome. Thank you. A couple of them and I are applying or graduating this semester. What does that mean for applying for internships? I mean, so we definitely are hiring full time people as well. Um, um, sometimes we do have interns who have graduated and are between um, graduating full and graduating with a bachelor's and going back to get a master's. We have interns that are in that category, um, but there's also many full time positions open. I think there's definitely at least two systems engineering positions up in full time. Um, for a full-time offers as well. Okay. Did I miss the question in there? Give me a moment to catch up on some of the questions and if people have more questions to add. Um, I do wanna let you um, introduce Tony Napolitano from MCLA and Jeff Tabor from Berkshire Community College to share the contacts at each of the institutions for these internships as well. Tony? Hello. It's a pleasure to be here, and I really enjoyed the presentation today. Um, what I want to make um, everyone aware of is that we have a virtual career fair that is approaching on March 25th, and I think this would be a great opportunity um, for General Dynamics to meet with some MCLA students uh, to discuss internship opportunities uh, and what's available for the summer and going forward. Uh, I know that um, last fall we also had the virtual fair and it was um, highly successful. And so I'm anticipating it will be as successful for this spring. Uh, the event is hosted through Handshake. Uh, I know that um, General Dynamics Mission Systems is already registered on Handshake. So um, you will certainly be uh, eligible to participate and register for the fair as an employer. Uh, and also, uh, I would be more than happy. We have a very active Career Services Facebook page. So if you have any internship postings that you would like promoted here on campus, uh, please get them to me, send them to me by email, and I will post them for you on our Facebook page. 
Uh, like I said, it's very active. We update it daily. So I think that would be a great way to uh, get the word out to the students um, that are here on campus checking out the Facebook page um, as far as what's available at General Dynamics. Thank you. I've enjoyed the presentation today. Excellent. So, Steve and Mike, do you have any additional questions that popped in the chat that you'd like to respond to? Sure. So, I think there's one about apprenticeship opportunities at GD. So, we also take um, uh, some longer co op opportunities that usually go from like January to the end of summer or starting in summer through like the end of um, December. We often take those as well. We usually post those as co-ops. Um, those are obviously good opportunities to take a break from the tech instruction and, and to get a little bit of real world experience. And we always like to hire those. Um, I think that's partially why you see when Mike was going through some of our popular schools, we have a lot of RPI and RIT because those both those schools require those. So we end up with a pretty large pipeline of people coming from those schools, but it's definitely a great way to, to get a lot of good work experience in during your schooling years. And then just the one I think there's also one about the um, tech writing. So, you know, really what they're um, putting together are We'll say manuals on how to maybe operate the equipment that we provide. So it's kind of uh, like a how-to, right? So we provide that to the sailors as we um, deliver our product. And so they're putting step-by-step -step directions. Um, here's how to operate it. And or um, if we also provide troubleshooting um, documentation. So they're, they're really um, providing uh, documentation to uh, the end user. Um, so to the sailors, um, on how to operate our equipment or how to troubleshoot it. Did that answer your question? Um, also, I wanted to add to this. Um, in my team, we actually have a, a technical writer because we, we write like very large, large documents. And we don't want to be talking to technical for those documents because uh, we want to make sure that um, that anybody can actually understand, read, and, and follow the instructions. So our technical writer makes sure that uh, we're using the proper language. Uh, we are communicated or communicated our point on, on point. That's, that's another one. So Ryan, I would say LinkedIn's a great way to connect with some of the managers and, and kind of share your profile with them. But the best way to apply is definitely going directly to our website. I do think that if you have the ability to apply through LinkedIn, it, it goes through some of the recruiters and eventually get to the managers as well. So it's not a bad way to do it, but the website is certainly the quickest and cleanest way to apply to any of the positions that you're interested in. Do we have any last questions? Please feel free to put them in the chat. We got one more from Natasha. Are there only internship opportunities during the summer or do you also offer internships in the fall? Um. Uh, typically, we, we we're looking for summer internships, although I, I think um, there's definitely situations where we communicate with people and, and line them up to work in the fall if, if that's what works well for your, your schedule. Um, we don't often post things, so it's usually that you have to kind of get in touch with the hiring manager or, or have done a previous internship to do some of the other scheduled time frame. I know we have a lot of interns who will come back during the winter breaks to support us for a couple of weeks over winter break and get to continue their kind of summer internship in the winter. Um, we did have a few that started in like late August that continued through the fall this year though. Great. Well, 
Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. Oh, we just got one more <laughs> for a mechanical engineer. What are the specific classes that GD would be looking for? Um, so I know, you know I, I myself is a software engineer, so I'm not great with answering mechanical questions, but I know when I, I've been on some interviews with some of my mechanical peers, we often ask um, about any experience in Creo or ANSYS, which are often the tools of choice. We often look for people who have experience with um, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, um, asking how well they've done with any kind of assembly drawings or, or kind of looking at that higher big picture and not just designing a single part, but kind of that larger complex parts. Mike, you have anything to add there? Yeah, um, I would say, well, two things, right? I mean, a lot of what we look for, um, I'll say, I don't know if we specifically look for some classes, right? I think the things that Stephen pointed out are definitely, you know, things we do look for, but a lot of what we do is on the job training, right? The degree is, is um, you know, kind of gives you that background, that that understanding of, of the discipline, um, but then we will do a lot of on-the-job training specific to manufacturing um, because we do also uh, take in mechanical engineers. You know, it's, it's that hands-on piece. It's the ability to uh, understand uh, drawings. Um, also any, you know, um, ability to troubleshoot. Um, so a less, a little bit less with the system side of things and more on the um, hands-on uh, pieces of the mechanical engineering degree. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate your time. If anyone is interested in applying for an internship opportunity, please check out the website and feel free to get in touch with Tony at NCLA and Jeffrey from BCC. They'll be great resources to help you get set up. If you have any other questions, you can feel free to send Tony and Jeffrey an email as well. Thank you all so much for joining and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.